through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Drop it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic, hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 227. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today we're going to talk about our DVD rundown for the week of February 5th. Mm-hmm. Um, Already of a, into February, man. Yes. Yeah, one twelfth of the year done. Are you going to start doing your math <laughs> no, again? No, Even I'm I not. can do that nope, one. I'm not. <laughs> um, you know, sort of a mixed mm-hmm. bag of stuff, mostly older stuff. Um, yeah. Some, some stuff highlighted performances some yeah, just not I mean, so to, great to kick all. off uh you know african-american history month yes i didn't even think about that top that's two int- films yeah, that's are a, relatively that's an relevant. interesting point and uh the first one we're going to talk about is flight mm-hmm. this is the denzel washington yes. led uh robert picture. zemeckis robert zemeckis getting back into that live action mm-hmm. work which i've been dying for for Seriously. years i think it's like also his either f- like maybe second r-rated movie he ever did his mm. first one was like something that like in the 80s or 90s wow. way a long time ago not very memorable Awesome. Uh, the story of uh, you know a pilot who's involved with a plane crash mm-hmm. and all of the things that come out of that. Mm-hmm. Um, Denzel Washington notably has been nominated for an Academy Award yes. for his performance. I think he's supposed to be. He was drunk when he was flying, mm-hmm. but he saves the plane, and that's yeah. what the whole movie is. It's like the, what. Yeah. yeah. How, what's acceptable, yeah. what isn't. Yeah, well, I don't know if being drunk and flying planes no, no, is ever going to be too no, yeah. <laughs> Imagine what he could do if he were sober and flying. <laughs> um, but, you know, uh, a film that's really largely led by performances. The film itself is sort of like, mm, it's decent, but, you know, it's not. It's really Denzel Washington's yeah. The Shining element mm-hmm. of it. In terms of the release, you got a Blu ray, DVD, digital copy, and ultraviolet in one, which is good. Yeah. I like that. We love it when they combine all that stuff together. Special features are pretty weak. Mm, um, first come up, on, I, Zemeckis. What, yeah, yeah. You don't have anything to talk about with mocap, so you got yeah. nothing else? Well, first up, <laughs> let's say, get the combo pack, because the DVD only one has no special features on it. None. So you don't want that. Might as well just, just torrent it at yeah. that point. Yeah. I'm not saying that. The views <laughs> of buy, Greg do not represent those of the here at the yeah. Scarecrow. Yeah. Yes, that's, that's more <laughs> Let's go with that one. <laughs> um, but, you know... Torrent it legally. Yeah. <laughs> In terms of the special features mm-hmm. on the combo pack, you have the origins of flight, sort of how it all came together, the making of it, which is pretty cool, anatomy of a plane crash. Ooh. That is a feature that actually seems worthwhile for yes. this release. That alone yes. is probably the best thing it has going for it. And then the last one, some Q&A highlights of a Q&A they did at yeah, the convention. I- interesting, probably at the Producers Guild, uh, because according to a Q&A session that the producers Steve Starkey and Jack Rapp did uh, in October of 2012. Uh, the primary al- airplane in the film that they mm. used, this is, I think this is kind of interesting considering it's a film about planes and a guy who's alcoholic. Yes. That's two facts. Uh, primary airplane in the film is a pastiche of several existing commercial airlines. So it's not to ID a specific airline or specific mm. type of plane as the problematic plane. Also, no promotional consideration was paid in any way for the alcohol brands featured mm. in the movie. They decided to feature beer, wine, and hard liquor brands for one shot only so as not to endorse any of them in- officially. Well, I mean, I don't think that whatever a company would want to be endorsed either. No, exactly. Like Budweiser, the brand no, that brings down no, planes. Exactly. Like, I don't think like, that would but be it's it's kind of option. smart if you think about all that, like, what is it, like, the lateral merchandising or whatever uh, they call that, that, like, where they try to shove in all those products. That yeah. clearly, with this, you don't want your plane company or your alcohol associated yeah. with that, <laughs> with a crashed plane by a drunk pilot. Yeah, I mean, like, that, that, that would be interesting. Actually, I'm kind of curious about QA now, but the, I mean, really, the anatomy of the plane crash is the only one yeah. that really sounds worthwhile. I would love a commentary with Denzel totally. and Robert Zemeckis, but totally. sadly, you are not going to get that on this release. Nope. Just saying. Nope. Uh, probably. Maybe if it wins an uh, Academy Award, it'll get some re release. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, something. Maybe. Probably not. I, yeah, I don't think so, but maybe. Don't we'll keep our fingers crossed. Don't I don't think it'll win an award, though. No, just I don't throwing think it so. out there. No. no offense, Denzel. Sorry. <laughs> Moving in a very dramatically different direction, though. And we're quality gonna, yeah. drop. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about Alex Cross. Mm-hmm. This is the reboot of the Alex Cross series, mm-hmm. which originally starred Morgan Freeman and yes. Kiss the Girls and Along Came Spider. Which amazed me. I didn't realize those yeah. were connected oh, yeah. because why oh. would I think Tyler Perry and Morgan Freeman would play the same character? They're did you, nothing did you even know the first two were connected Along Came with Spider? I and did. Kiss the Girls I knew like that those two were okay. because I think whichever was the second one, Along Came the Spider, yeah. I think, I remember them talking about it being the sequel to Kiss the okay. Girls. Um, well, you know, this time you have Tyler Perry in the titular role yes. of Alex Cross. Mm-hmm. And 
I'll be honest, like, I don't hate Tyler Perry. Mm. Like, I, I think his films are fine. Mm-hmm. Like, they aren't very interesting to me, but I don't Madea's think... Witness th- Protection is your favorite, right? Uh, Eugene yeah. Levy? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, anything with Eugene Levy, really. Um, but, you know... <sighs> mm-hmm. He's not great either. He's kind of yeah. deified and vilified in a manner which I don't think are either are accurate. Like yeah. I think he's sort of middle of the road. He's yeah. okay. Yeah. Like he's but, not. It, I mean, I think this is his first foray into action, and maybe mm-hmm. hopefully his last. Uh, not. Not. The I mean, greatest. maybe maybe he could get better. I'm not yeah, saying he can't true. get better, but it just it feels like a very weird choice. Um, you were telling me that there was somebody else originally yes, thought uh, to be Idris Elba was originally which consider. I think was. Would have been awesome. Oh man, like who wouldn't have been on board with b- crazy buff Matthew Fox and Idris Elba going head to head? Yeah, that was I think the that weird, sounds way more the exciting. weird thing having Matthew Fox A as a villain, yes, and B as like a skeletal version of himself, mm-hmm. so that he was unrecognizable. It was yes. very weird. In terms of this, you know, it's kind of again a very sort of limited release. They have a Blu-ray, d- digital copy, and ultraviolet in one. I think they have a DG- DVD as well, but no mm-hmm. real combo pack. Um, special features very sort of limited. They have a commentary by the director Rob Cohen who did The Fast and the Furious and okay. Triple X and a few other stuff like mm-hmm. that so if that sounds appealing to you if that's maybe, your wheelhouse yeah, maybe you'll want it mm-hmm. uh, there's a featurette on The Psychologist and The Butcher adapting mm. and filming Alex Cross. Yeah, because the butcher is the bad guy, right? I mm. think that was the name actually. The book, this one's. Yeah, uh, from, yeah, yeah. So I mean, that's kind of interesting. I kind of think the idea of discussing how a film is adapted yeah. from a source material is an interesting one. Int- yeah, but, you real. know, I mean, that's sort of yeah, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. and then some deleted <laughs> scenes, and that's really Woo! it. Yeah, not not exactly a, yeah. a bell ringing kind of event. You should just YouTube Tyler Perry doesn't know how to hold a gun. It's a pretty funny video. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that pretty much answers all. You can read Nick's <laughs> review on the McGuffin yes. site. I think he said it was his favorite to write during the last year, even though it was like one of his lowest graded <laughs> films. So. Take that for what you will. Um, moving right along, we also mm-hmm. have Deadfall, which sort of came out last year. I think it was a very small release. Yeah, I barely remember. I remember blip I, in the radar. I remember it having press screenings like in late November, early December, something like that, and then suddenly I see it on DVD now. So I think it was probably a limited release, mostly direct to video. I know probably not too good of a sign for the film. Yeah, it's uh, got Magnolia Home Entertainment behind it though, so mm, it very okay. well possibly could have been more geared towards like uh, direct or well, more of a just like a direct to oh, video yeah, yeah, kind of yeah, release. Sorry, yeah. I mean, so like a VOD type mm-hmm, deal. I mean, gotcha. I don't think it definitely was not a wide release. But this is a film that stars Eric Bana, Olivia Wilde as siblings who mm-hmm. commit a robbery, and then she they both sort of flee to try and avoid being captured. She gets connected with Charlie yes. Hunnam, Sons of Anarchy, who takes her home to his family. Eric Bana comes back, and a tense situation develops. Out Hijinks of that. ensue. Yeah, one might even say. You know, of all <laughs> the ones that we're going to talk about today, this actually is one of the more extensive. Um, special features on the release. Yeah. Considering it's one probably the least people have yeah. heard of. There is a Blu-ray and DVD combo version of it, though. Okay. So that's probably the best one to get. Just uh, yeah, out there. most likely. Um, you got a behind-the-scenes featurettes, Snow and Western and Family. Those mm. are two different ones. Um, you know, I think, you know, obviously Family is an interesting one to yeah. talk about, and you can see it's going to be Charlie Hunnam's character yes. and his family, and then mm-hmm. Olivia Wilde and, and Eric Bana's, presumably yeah. two different sort of perspectives on Family. And then it's one a film that's very much about being in the winter if you watch the trailer like you know that's a huge element of the story and you were saying that yeah like Olivia Wilde's first scene I think was when she was uh, outside in like a miniskirt and nearly froze to death yeah that's that's uh, not (laughs) ideal I would say yeah so for a movie that's entirely snow almost entirely snow based being outside in a miniskirt seems like a bad idea Um, then you have production interviews with Eric Bana, Olivia Wilde, and the director Stefan Ruzowitzki. Hmm. Ruzowitzki? Yeah. Uh, mouthful. yeah. It's a mouthful. <laughs> uh, so that's cool. You know, I suspect they're probably very short unfortunately, but you know, at least probably. you're getting some important yeah. people yeah. actually talking about exactly. the project on like flight. <laughs> yeah. um, and then you have an extended interview with the director. Mm. You have uh, Access.TV, Look at Deadfall, which is the Mark Cuban television network. Okay. Um, that's right, yeah. That I think it used to be cable.net or something like that. Yeah, I, I forget know. what it was. But he also owns Magnolia. Okay. So that makes perfect sense perfect why sense. he would shove himself yeah. in there. And then some behind the scenes footage. So yeah. it's not a great release, but. But you it's know, still a little bit more full than, say, Flight or It's Alex got Cross. something. Yeah. You know, it's at least something. I mean, that's <laughs> like, come on. No commentary, though, which is kind of unfortunate. But uh, I mean, I guess they're probably not low on say. budget <laughs> yeah. already. So, yeah. <gasps> 
Uh, probably the most noteworthy film yes. being released this week. Thankfully, also has some of the most extensive special features, mm -hmm. and as the Blu-ray Blu -ray release of Laura. Yes, this is the forty-four. Yep, right? yeah. Otto Preminger directed film. Who he was also known for Anatomy of a Murder. Yes, for those who remember that. Um, you know, this is starring was it Gene Tierney mm -hmm. and Vincent Price. Classic, classic film. Yes. Um, you Considered know, by the AFI to be number four in the list of the ten greatest films in the mystery genre. Wow. That's pretty, pretty, pretty high, respectable. Pretty high rank I mean, if you I, think yeah, about yeah, film noir yeah, and that's mystery. Tough. Like, like, I, 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 would, I bet one, two, and three are all very recognizable. Yeah. I would just take yeah. a wild guess and say. Um, so that's impressive. But you know, the, the, the release itself is very cool. It's got an extended version of the movie with an alternate opening. Wow. I didn't know there was even an alternate opening. So we're almost, what, like... 39 years from the when the or, or 59 years from when the film came out uh 44 probably 60 oh yeah you're right almost 70 years yeah almost 70 years wow. so um it's quite a lot. oh yeah to next year will be 70 yeah that's so crazy 30, so 69 not 59 look yeah. at that math yeah i can't do it yeah. but i sometimes got there eventually you got there eventually i, respect <laughs> I can't it. always math but when i do it takes you a minute. You, know, you got to rev that engine up a little bit. You know, I, I took away the uh, the math of the uh -huh, date, the pressure, from you. the pressure, and then I just I just yeah. threw all numbers out of my head. Yeah, that's all good. <laughs> uh, you also have a commentary track, uh, commentary track with composer David Raskin Ooh, yeah. and film professor Gene. Janine Basinger. That's interesting because the Laura theme is one of the most recognizable parts of the film. It was mm. very, very famous at the time. And if you, if you know it, if you've seen the film ever and you heard it again, you would exactly know what I'm talking about. Uh, there's also another commentary track by film historian Rudy Belmer, hmm. which is cool. Yeah. Uh, you have a, a biography episode about Jean Tierney, a shattered portrait. Ooh. It's called. So this is from Biography Channel. Mm -hmm. uh, you also have the biography episode for Vincent Price. Ooh, awesome. The versatile villain. Mm. It's called. You know he sings in this movie? Yeah, I do. And he was supposed to, the, the uh, studio thought he would be the next Perry Como. That's how excited they were about his singing. He went in a very different direction. <laughs> yes, he did. Uh, you also have some deleted scenes with optional commentary by film historian Rudy Bilmer. Mm. And yeah, very but, cool. Yeah, so it's a pretty it's a pretty uh, extensive release for a film that's so old. Obviously, you know, it's not necessarily the players who are yes. in it, uh, and, and some of it's rehashed like yeah, the biography like, episodes. Yeah. But you know, nevertheless, I think it's nice to package that all together. It is. You know, I've never seen those biography episodes. Exactly. And I've never heard those commentary tracks, so that works for me mm -hmm. still. Nice so. for us to catch up on 69 years ago. Yes. Uh, join us for our next episode when we discuss Catherine Zeta-Jones mm -hmm. in honor of side effects uh, coming out this Friday. And as always, you can find us at MacGuffinPodcast.com, Twitter.com, slash MacGuffinCast, Facebook.com, slash MacGuffinPodcast, phone number 323-761-9842. We're on iTunes, we're on Blip.tv, Roku, Miro. Check in and get glue, get some badges, get some stickers, get whatever it is that you get glue.com yeah. uh, leave us some reviews on iTunes mm -hmm. and all that good stuff and uh, we'll catch you later the wrath of Khan can't stop me I'm on fire tonight the board can't stop me because I've got space game and it feels alright